<laughs> Welcome to the second video in our The People vs Joseph R. Ganescoli saga, where we take a look at the actor who played Vito Spatafori on The Sopranos and some weird stories that are associated with him. Be sure to check out the first part of this video where we focused on Ganescoli's strange interactions with fans, which includes apparently following a Sopranos tour bus around so he can sell bootleg merchandise, aggressively trying to strong arm fans into buying his stuff, and being available for hire as a chef so you can get him to cook you and your friends some good old Johnny cakes. There have been rumours over the years that Ganescoli and the rest of the Sopranos cast have not seen eye to eye, and that's what I wanted to discuss today. Again, as I mentioned with the first video, take everything you hear with a pinch of salt, and I genuinely don't want to slam a guy if it turns out this is all smoke without fire. But as the rumours go, Sopranos cast members were turned off by some of Vito's shenanigans during filming of the show, and things he did after the series ended. This stuff is in addition to things the cast may have been irritated at which have already been mentioned in the first video. One accusation I've heard is that he was selling script leaks, but I cannot find any actual evidence for this, so it might be a baseless accusation, so I won't talk about it. Plus, David Chase said on the Talking Sopranos podcast that it was one of the crew members who was doing the script leaks. In terms of what happened during the show's run, Ganascoli is alleged to have caused dysentery in the ranks by pitching loads of story ideas, including the Vito is gay storyline to the show's writers, there was a lot of competition over screen time over side characters, and not a lot of space to fit everyone in. In general, there was practically no changes to the script when filming commenced, no improvisation allowed from the actors, no input or changes. It's reported that when actors went to David Chase saying that they didn't feel their character would do this or say that, he would tell them, who told you it was your character? So the story goes that Ganescoli was trying as hard as he could to get himself more screen time, so in addition to getting a second role in the show as a new character, with increasing amount of screen time and character importance, he pushed and pushed the writers with the gay mobster storyline, having heard about it on the news. And many Sopranos fans, myself included, have been bemused at just how long the Vito New Hampshire arc is. The Sopranos is quite a lot more episodic than you may remember, Characters like Tracy and Kim are surprisingly only in it for a single episode each. Feech is not in the show as much as you may remember, and usually individual storylines and arcs are done within a single episode, like Eugene and him wanting to leave the life. Him going to Tony, him struggling with the FBI, him arguing with his wife, his suicide, all of that is all done in one episode. So the fact that we get a storyline that runs several episodes of Vito breaking down and ending up in a small town where he starts a romantic relationship with the gay fireman, all the while New Jersey and New York try to deal with it, is a little much, and it probably didn't need to go on for that long, and that precious screen time could have been used for other storylines. Vito practically became the main character of the show for a little while. And the fact that the actor engineered this storyline by having his ear to the writers which other actors presumed was not allowed, and as such he's not allowed in this social club no more, hence why you pretty much never see him with the rest of the cast at reunions and stuff. Life imitates art, as San Tazu might say, because it's pretty uncanny that the crew hating Vito is perfectly mirrored by what happened with the cast and the actor. But I gotta say, as much as I understand a close-knit cast being aggravated when someone comes along and pitches a storyline that gets accepted and turned into a multi-episode arc, and yeah, you would point the finger at the actor who is selfishly trying to get himself more screen time, but doesn't this ultimately fall on the writers and David Chase? They're the ones who give the okay in the end. Plus, I wonder how much even the actor himself knew in terms of how big this Vito is gay storyline would be, because it first started in season 5, and then is extended in season 6. In other words, to play devil's advocate, what if he thought the idea sounded cool, told the writers about it, and they put that scene in where Finn saw Vito catching not pitching, and then the writers themselves decided to take the gay Vito thing and do something really big with it in season 6. In any case, Chase himself reportedly says in the Soprano sessions that the actor pitched the storyline and it rubbed the cast the wrong way. Apparently, Bobby Bacala was going to get an increased focus in season 6A before they decided to devote a lot of it to Vito. Is that true? 
I don't know, but it makes sense as after the veto stuff is done, Bobby does get more screen time, eventually becoming one of Tony's top guys. Ganascoli was also pitching, not catching, pitching himself through a PR team, which he hired during the show's run, doing interviews and self-promotional stuff, which again annoyed the rest of the cast, as whilst the rest of the cast had a family-like feel, he was hiring a publicist and pushing himself as an individual as much as he could. He took acting lessons and he lost weight to better his image, something which was incorporated into the show. I mean, I get where the resentment can come from, but surely taking acting lessons and getting into shape when you've been cast in one of the greatest shows ever made is hardly the worst thing you can do. I'm trying to be balanced here, and in fact, it's being professional and optimising the opportunity you've been given. But the big thing that seems to have caused the rift between Ganescoli and the cast is that after James Gandolfini died, Ganescoli gave a lot of interviews where he overplayed how close he was to James, how the two were dear, dear friends. I was this close. So just like Vito in season 6 when Tony was in the hospital, Ganescoli was pretending he was all close and cuddly with the skip when in actual fact he was never that close and was actually getting publicity for himself. He did press tours playing up his relationship with Gandolfini, who the whole cast loved, when in actual fact they were never on regular speaking terms. I've never actually been able to find an interview where he bigged up his relationship with James Gandolfini. Again, as mentioned in the first video, a lot of this stuff is now not available. But in a Newsmax interview, he did say that he didn't leave the cast on the best of terms and, to be fair, did say that he and Gandolfini weren't exactly close. But he praised Gandolfini for coming to his wedding and being a good sport at the celebrations. And there are images showing Gandolfini presumably at Ganascoli's wedding. Um, when my character changed and he, we were doing the read through, he uh, took me outside and he said, look, you know, we can go talk to David. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, you're from Brooklyn. You know, you know a lot of guys, you know a lot of people. It's you mean when the real. character went gay, when yeah. turned gay, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. We can talk yeah. to him and we don't have to do this. I said, well, Jim, I sort of asked for it, you know what I mean? So I'll trust them in that they know what they're doing and I'll go ahead and do it. So, you know, I wasn't uh, close friends whenever his, uh, he had never really turned his back on me. He was, uh, and leave off in the best way with the, some of the cast. And he was a stand up guy, a humble guy, down to earth guy, very approachable, tremendous talent. This interview was in 2013, though. So if he's already saying he didn't leave the show with the best of relationships, perhaps the Gandolfini thing isn't the main beef because there were clearly tensions already there. Either that, or maybe it was later on when he started to play up his relationship with the big man. A key clue that there is something going on is that Ganescoli was a major omission from the Talking Sopranos podcast, where so many actors, extras, fans and crew members were invited. Other omissions can be understandable. Tony Sirico wasn't in the best of health, Vince Corotola is apparently a weirdo on Twitter, and yet there's no sign of veto anyway. Michael Imperioli and Steve Sharipa did praise Ganescoli's acting though on occasion, but this actually makes sense because on the Potter Bing podcast, the actor said people on set held grudges against him. And on the Pod Yourself a Gun podcast, Ganescoli said he was invited to Talking Sopranos, but he turned it down due to a beef with one of the hosts. Or is there a reason why you won't do uh, the other Sopranos podcast? The other, the other one, or the others? Oh, the 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 other uh, the other one um, with uh, with Steve and Michael. Well, first of all, it's over. Second oh, all, that's right. Yeah. Second of all, I had a falling out with one of them. Uh, and it, got, it got nasty. Mm. And, uh, and then they seemed to have forgotten. And they asked me to come on. I said, I'm thinking to myself, are you kidding me? Yeah. So I said, no, I'm, I'm not interested. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So, Yeah. And so we've begun to zone in on something, something very big, and that something is Steve Sturipa, who's made himself a reputation as loud, dumb and abrasive from his time as the Talking Sopranos co-host, a far cry from the quiet and reserved character he plays in the show. Sure, Sturipa sounds good for a laugh, but he does come off as a nasty piece of work at times, telling stories of dodgy things he's done, like messing with a customer's food he didn't like. He holds grudges easily, always going on about Pat Cooper or Robert De Niro. 
I have reason to believe he also got one of my videos flagged for copyright because I made a harmless joke about him. And in an interview with actor Craig Vincent, friend of Sharipa, he told me that the man does indeed like to hold grudges. And from the bits and pieces of information we have, Steve and Ganescoli seem not to like each other. Lovers quarrel, maybe. It would be great to see both on the same podcast, though. Before and way before. It was among the calzones. Real greaseball shit. You know, honestly, though there may be truth to the cast not liking Ganescoli, from what we know about Sharipa, I think this could easily be a Sharipa issue, in that it's him specifically who doesn't like Ganescoli, him who is bitter that his storyline got squeezed out, and as he was a more integral established member of the cast, he could easily spread gossip and ill will about Ganescoli, which may be spread to the rest of the actors, who knows. Perhaps most of this negative reputation of Ganescoli actually comes from Steve Sharipa, and this might actually be the case. There's several tabloid articles online which talk about uh, the Sopranos cast not liking Ganescoli, and they all quote the same source article which is on page 6, and according to Bob's Blitz, who did some digging, the source was later revealed to be Steve Sharipa, who claimed the cast were turned off by Ganescoli's, I quote, grandstanding and self-promotion. According to the source, and I quote, after joining the show, Joe hired his own PR person and would do all this press for himself, and it just became too much. Jim was very much a team player and would only do interviews if it was to help someone in the Sopranos family or as a group, but Joe was the opposite. He kept grandstanding and it became a turnoff for Jim and David Chase. It also rubbed most of the cast the wrong way. And then as soon as Jim died, Joe was grandstanding again. He wasn't close to Jim. They probably haven't spoken in around seven years. Some members of the cast feel like Joe is using Jimmy's death to get his own name out there. The article then states, Multiple sources told the Blitz at the time that much of the above was untrue and that Sharipa alone might be raging at Ganescoli, a rivalry that reportedly stemmed from Joseph's Sopranos season 6 breakout role as gay mobster Spatifori, a jealousy that at the time apparently included not wanting Ganescoli to garner positive publicity or success, our research shows that no publicity person was employed by Ganescoli during his Sopranos work. A second source indicated that he didn't think Joe even used an agent. Research at the time turned up a photo of Joseph's 2005 wedding, attended by James Gandolfini. An internet search also turned up tales of a smiling Gandolfini at Ganescoli's Soup as Art Brooklyn restaurant. Eyewitness accounts indicate castmates would often join Joe there to help promote his business. A sick as a dog Jim was once there front and centre, signing autographs and helping out his pal. There's an article that also quotes a response from Ganescoli as part of a tribute to James Gandolfini. First and foremost, let me say that the sudden loss of Jimmy, who leaves behind a beautiful wife and a 13-year-old son and a daughter just 8 months old, is beyond tragic. He was someone we all looked up to as our leader and he was a truly gifted actor. But more than that, he was a humble, regular and compassionate guy who was taken from us way too early. The last thing in the world I want to be is a distraction. It's a shame that you, and you alone, not cast members, decided to bring up this story now when his family is grieving as is the rest of the world. I didn't want to respond so soon because unlike you, I know who you are, always have, and it was confirmed. I thought that it would have been distasteful. I find it comical that you think I was grandstanding when in fact you are the biggest media pig out there. It's an inside joke that whenever there was a camera you knew who to be beside for photo ops or where and when the camera was on you, comically showing up for Rangers games when you hate hockey. Quite the calculating shill. But then you turned my heartfelt tributes to Jim into something ugly, you crossed the line. But instead of going after the paper that insinuated what Jim ate and drank his last day had something to do with his passing, you went after me. No balls. Karma just called. They are looking for you. I could refute every one of your silly accusations, but that would only fuel this nonsense and give it credence. I've learned that you can't unring a bell, and so it goes. What's most important to me is that my family, friends, the Sopranos crew, fans and the people I respect know my character and the truth. This story has absolutely broken my heart, but then again I considered the source which gave me solace. Why would you come out with this story at a time when Jim was not even buried is really sad on your part. I feel sorry for you. 
you are an angry person, but really you should be so thankful for what God has put in your path. But more importantly than you is that the world has lost a great actor, friend, humanitarian, husband and loving father. That's the real story. I can only pray that God gives strength to his family, wife and kids in the years to come. The ceremony for Jim was spectacular, moving and fit for a king. And to you, James, I say, go easy, my friend, until we meet again. I will bring the Gabagool. Knowing what we know about Sturipa, his grudges over single interactions with people, how much he goes on about said grudges, how petty he comes across, I can imagine him being in a permanent state of fury and irritation that Ganeskoli got a big storyline on the show. Enough of this rush to judgement, for all we know this guy's got a hard on for Ganeskoli. I'm starting to wonder just how much of the man's reputation is actually justified. Two things can be true at the same time. Sturipa is vindicative, petty, has thin skin and is easily jealous. And Ganeskoli is a grifter who squeezed as much he, as he can from his time on The Sopranos. But bringing in James Gandolfini's name, when the man is no longer around to speak to the issue, is below the belt, whoever did it. And for what it's worth, I can't really find anything from other Sopranos cast members saying negative things about Ganeskoli, which might speak to their class more than anything else. On the Red Ticket Blues podcast, three years after the report about him came out in the tabloids, Ganeskoli took aim at Streeper, calling him stupid. After Jimmy passed away, and I, I, I read something in Bob's Blitz, which is a, a well-known pop culture website in the uh, tri-state area regarding a little back and forth with a co-star former co-star steve sherpa you know all surrounding the death of uh james so what do you want to tell us a little bit more about that yeah that's uh that's a thing that um actually you know really bothered me and um steve uh and i were you know pretty friendly at one time uh, on the show we we hung out we talked a lot and um as i got more to do on the show and a little busier i wasn't really that uh accessible and uh maybe w uh, steve there was a known thing about steve he was like you know the inside joke among castmates was like you know he has a big bowl of ice cream in front of him and he and he's always looking at yours you know he's like a woman with a virginia ham under her arm crying a blues because she has no bread so i think he sort of resented the, how i got you know uh, busy on the show, and I, you know, he's he's that type of guy. He doesn't like, you know, want to see people do well or get ahead or something like that. A little envious. So, um, when what happened with Jimmy, um, he gave the story to the Post, but the Post had come out and said all these derogatory things about Jim. You know, what he was eating and his past habits, which has been well documented. And I felt that was like a really like a low time to do it. I mean, Jimmy had gone to Afghanistan or uh, Iraq to visit the troops with um, Tony Sirico, Bully Walnuts, and he did the uh, special on HBO about um, the veterans. I just thought it was a low blow. I called him up the next day. I called up the writer, and, uh, and I, I, I unleashed him. Uh, I, I really like what it got into him. And, I, you know, he was giving an interview to the to the post, and I'm saying, or he was on the radio. I forgot how it went down, but I was saying, how is this guy not like, you know, trashing the post of what they what they do to him, and he's talking to them, and he was on, um, and I might have, I don't know how I came out with it. Maybe I did it in a radio interview. Maybe I was like, you know, did it on social media. I forget. Mm -hmm. But so he got wind of it, and he planted this story with the post coming out after me, and. Uh, and this is before Jimmy was not even buried, you know, which was classless in in itself. And um, I had said all, of, all along, you know, when I got interviewed, I said, listen, I was in closest friends with Jimmy, but he came to my wedding, he spoke, he came with his son, he came to my restaurant, did an appearance when he was sick as a dog, and um, he approached me when he said, listen, if you're not comfortable doing this uh, part in, uh, in The Sopranos when my character took the turn, let's go talk to David and, you know, I'll go with you, which I thought was really, you know, nice of him. Um, so those two things I had like a little uh, connection with, you know, I always remember that and I always knew what kind of guy he was. So I always said that, I wasn't close to him, but I brought up those, those things and just said he was just a tremendous guy. And so stupid says I'm grandstanding and 
you talk about grandstanding. I mean, you go on a national show at the time he was on TV, national, and you go 45 minutes. And then, of course, you know, at the funeral, he's like showing his, you know, he comes out crying and he's facing the cameras. I mean, he's very predictable. Uh, he always knew where to be with the cameras, you know, behind Jimmy or when he was on the red carpet. You know, he knew exactly where to get his camera on. He's never turned down a, a camera shot. And we all know that. So uh, Bob's Blitz put this all together. And, of course, that Sunday, you know, he was in there promoting uh, something in the retail or the rental section. I forgot he what he was promote, promoting, but it was just convenient that it was that week and anybody wanted, reading about the Sopranos was just thirsty for anything to do with uh, Jimmy. So um, I, I'm just glad that Bob exposed him for the two-faced guy he is. And um, that was it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy I sleep well at night. So I don't think you guys are still, uh, you're not talking these days, right? That, that still remains an issue. I haven't seen him. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I would never go to the garden. And he goes, I mean, he's got to true. He's always in front seat. Yeah, he's always there. And, you know, he does things for the garden. I get that. The garden of dreams and so on. He right. does know nothing about hockey when the, the, when the, the Knicks are tanking. He's at the Ranger games. And he's got <laughs> a stupid fat face on the, uh, the scoreboard. In an interview with the show on the Riverside Radio, Ganescoli said Sharipa is straight up jealous of him and is an insecure person. Elsewhere... Ganescoli said the following about the claims against him. This is a vindicative plant by another cast member. The problem that Jimmy and I had was long ago solved. He knew it was not my fault. The press I did was when I was killed off the show and at that point it didn't matter. I was done. Cast members told me the cast member was envious of all the tension and work I was getting in season 6 of the show. He resented it and now he resents me paying my tribute to Jim. I always lead off by saying we were not the closest of friends, but he touched me in ways I will always remember. And finally, I found this post from Ganescoli where he trashes Sharipa in more direct terms. So there you have it. Perhaps the truth lies somewhere in between all of this. Maybe Ganescoli was subject to suspicions about script leaks and did cause irritation when his storyline was expanded. But maybe the worst of it all came from Sharipa, who fueled the fire by taking shots at Ganescoli's tribute to Gandolfini when the man died, feeling he misrepresented how close he was to Gandolfini. Maybe when it comes to Ganescoli's reputation among Sopranos fans, it's all a big nothing, because it really comes from a beef with a single actor. What do you make of this? Let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.